moment, Jeff Ogilvy survives wing foot. Now the moment Aaron Bradley has waited. Curry Webb is the five-time Australian Open champion. Golf at its best by one of the best in golf, Peter Thompson. Stand in front of a crowd like this today and win the PGA Championship is pretty special. He's done it at last, Greg Norman. Gets his name on the Stonehaven Cup. Leash been to 11 under. Now we've got a new leader, kids. Here it is. Adam Scott. A life changer. Coming up next, you have unrestricted access to golf across Australia and the world. Thanks to Golf Australia, we're going inside the ropes. Subscribe now on iTunes or your favourite podcast app or head to golf.org.au. G'day everybody and welcome to episode 130 of Inside the Ropes. Not only have we got to number 130, but they've also let us back on the screens. <laughs> Can you believe it? Uh, I'm no. Ali Whitaker, joined by Mark Hayes, Matt Kamensky and Justin Falkner today. It is going to be an absolute ripper of a show. Yeah, it really is. Can't wait. It's such a great time of the year. Australian Open coming up, obviously the President's Cup and the Australian PGA hold on their heels. Uh, and we get a chance to talk to Mark Leishman which oh, I can't wait. He's one of the great characters of Australian golf. Yeah, you could talk to him. I feel like you could talk to him over, over one of his Leishman lagers. You could talk to him <laughs> at the golf course. You could have him at your dinner table with your, with your parents present. Like, he's just kind of one of those salt-of-the-earth uh, Aussie blokes and always great to have around. It's very true. And it's, it's a big couple of weeks. As uh, Ali says, we're joined by Matt Kaminsky. Um, Matt, you must be getting excited about what's ahead of you as well. Yeah, I think we're just inside of 10 days until the President's Cup. Everybody shows up. We got the Junior President's Cup first, and then we roll right into the President's Cup. So it's, uh, yeah, not long now. It's now, technically, I have to introduce you properly because you are the Executive Director of the President's Cup, and that sounds so important. <laughs> are no, you important that important? That are you the, the no, head honcho here? No, I'm not very important at all. I've got a lot of great team, and we're just, uh, just here putting on a great event. So we're excited for it. Now, I've heard some rumours. So obviously, you mm. know, everything's starting to kick off. There's, there's been a lot of construction around the golf course as well. And just while we have you here, because we want to get kind of like the inside knowledge in the lead up to the President's yeah. Cup, we'll mainly focus on the Aussie Open. But apparently there is an absolute tonne of buildings being, being put up. They've got, I think, 150 people working around the clock to try and get everything done. How stressful is that for yeah, you? Yeah, and that 150 <laughs> is just one, one of our contractors. So when you think wow. about it, there's a, there's a lot of people out there getting, getting ready for this event. And it's, uh, you think back to 2011 and definitely 1998 when we've been here, uh, 2011, since to, we're probably 30% bigger than what we were in 2011 in the build and the amount of structures on site. We're gonna have 21 video boards around the property, over 8,000 grandstand seats. Um, we had to move our village to, to where the driving range was in 2011, so that, that village will be, you know, basically the size of the MCG in, in uh, scope. And <laughs> wow. uh, we'll have, have a Drummond, Drummond uh, uh, fan shop there. We'll have uh, interactive zone. Melbourne will have a big Melbourne lounge. We'll have a stage. They'll be playing live music during the week as well. So it's going to be a pretty cool hub of activity off the golf course, you know, when the competition's not happening. Yeah, so. just, just on that Drummond Golf note as well, they're sponsoring today's show. Dr okay. Drummond's Golf Australia's biggest, and they also, I've, I've got to tell you a little secret, they gave me my first job. Is that right? <laughs> Ever. Yeah, so it's kind of going back back to basics here. Yeah, I used to work in Drummond's You might be able to sneak down to the fan job. The Royal <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you reckon I can get a gig that way. Put in a shift, don't <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, that's it. Yeah. The medium looks great on you, yeah, Justin. That's what I need to say. No, but Matt, Matt Griffin as well, he worked there as well. So oh, kind oh, of yeah. uh, big supporters of golf for a long time. Did you leave on good terms? <laughs> I think so. I mean, so you should maybe ask them. <laughs> I'm not sure they knew that I was hosting today, but anyway, it's, uh, it's all been good. Falks, uh, an epic part of the Australian season coming up. You're yeah. always super busy this time of year. Are you pumped? Yeah, so excited. We get, obviously, the two weeks here. Having the President's Cup this year is going to be awesome. And then you sort of feel like it dips a little bit over Christmas, but then straight back into it with uh, the Vic Open and the Women's Australian Open as well. But, yeah, we've been down to Royal mm. Melbourne uh, last week, and it looks amazing. Grandstand behind every green, I think I counted, and... Yeah, it looks unbelievable. It's going to be absolutely massive. We've mm. got plenty to cover today in terms of uh, news from around the world. Two season enders we had on the weekend. I got six hours sleep that night just because <laughs> the European Tour finished at 11.30 and the LPGA finale started, I think, 5 a.m. the next morning. So I think my math's a little bit off there. But let's talk <laughs> about the European Tour uh, race to Dubai to start with. John Rahm uh, walked away with the title. It was a big finish. He almost fell over the line, which is really harsh when you see how well he played, but, you know, he was, he was that far in front 
Six shots clear at points during the final round and it looked like it was going to be a canter, but what a finish again the second week in a row by Tommy Fleetwood to get up into contention and obviously uh, Mike Lorenzo Vera from, from France who is a new name to a lot of people, especially at that level at the uh, you know, Dubai World Final. But um, yeah, an incredible finish and Ram as cool as the other side of the pillow alley from the bunker <laughs> up and down to win with a birdie. It's just, you know next level when he gets going he's fantastic yeah it was it was pretty pretty awesome and mlv as he's known mike lorenzo vera um he's kind of got a little bit of a reputation and sadly because he's an epic bloke um a really likable guy um but he's kind of got the reputation of getting into the mix after 18 36 and then falling away on the weekend he had quite a sizable lead through 36 holes um last weekend and then everyone's just like come on mike you know i think the whole <laughs> the whole tour we're time. just Make kind of happen, barracking yeah. for him and i think you, i think that was quite palpable palpable um amongst the guys everyone wants to go and win but you know, every now and then it'd be good to see that guy just get over the end. I saw something pretty funny on Twitter from him the next day. And he said <laughs> his kids are named, I think, T Tony or Tony yep. and John. So he's been run over by John and Tommy. And he said, my kids are going to have their names changed yeah. when I get home. So. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about his interview. Yeah, where he saw on the camera. What yeah, he, he, went, he went flat out in, <laughs> in his TV interview. Uh, we're not going to say what he said. But, uh, needless on to purpose. Say, there was apologies yeah. for the language. Mm. But I, and then he goes, oh, I'm French. I'm French. I'm French. I'm French. I'm like, that's, oh, OK, that's, that's the explanation for it. Yeah, but it's, um, it's been, you know, obviously worldwide, there's been tonnes to talk about as well. But, but Ram in particular, one of the things that I heard about him was that he said he, he's such a competitive guy and he loves competition and one of the things that a lot of people that are competitive struggle with with golf is that you're not playing one opponent and he's always said that that's what he loves about golf is that he can go out and play on his own and play against himself mm. and I just think that's a really interesting mm. mind frame to have when it's you know head to head is kind of the golfer's dream for most people but for him to have kind of that wherewithal that he can be out there on the, his own is probably why he's been so successful. Well, you saw him really knuckle down when he not blew the lead, but it was being frittered away. He saw him really knuckle down, at the, obviously, at the crucial part of the round. Well, someone who did really well in the final round, Ellie, and a big way to finish the season uh, is Jason Scrivener. Um, he was sitting at home three or four weeks ago, uh, not knowing before the Turkish Airlines opened what he would actually have to do to get to the rest of the season. Shines in Turkey, shines in South Africa, 10th in Dubai, 400,000 euro jumps in. If, you, if, if someone who's on the edge of a card and planning their future for next season. That's immense, isn't it? It's, it's huge. so important. Yeah, it is absolutely huge. And we're going to talk about him a little, little bit later on as well in our Australian Open predictions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh I no idea why. Did I pull that off? Did I pull that off? really well done. <laughs> no, but Scoop, I mean, he's one of the best ball strikers, I think, out of Australia and incredibly underrated. He's been player. underrated for ages. He's yeah. been playing this well for years now, I think, on the European tour. And no offence, probably could walk down the street and not get recognised by too many people, but... He's been a wonderful player. And we'll tell him you said that, mate. Oh, well, I'm, I'm yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. But it's, tr it's true. And, and, you know, for the first time, I reckon he's got that shot of confidence that he can go out and do that on the big stage. I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than that for him to play in the race to Dubai final and shine. And realistically, he was the equal best scorer in the last day with Tommy Fleetwood. That's mint. Mm. Yeah, that's serious stuff. Um, also, over uh, in the US on the LPGA, there was the uh, the race to the CMA Globe, which came to a massive crescendo, you have <laughs> yeah. to say. Uh, so, the the way that it worked this year was that the um, the process to get into the race to the CMA Globe and the CME Group Tour Championship uh, changed. It used to be the top five and the top 12 had a chance to walk away with the million dollar prize. This year, they changed it. It's $1.5 million goes to the winner, and any one in the top 60 can win. Firstly, how, how do you guys feel about that, that change in format? Because I feel like it was a little controversial. Uh, it's had controversial, but to me it makes sense. Mm. Um, you know, you want everyone in with a shot. And I think, you know, the PGA Tour did... It, that was also controversial, what they did this year, but at least it makes it understandable when you're watching it on television. I think to see someone run away and win a tournament, as in previous years, and then not get the big check at the end is much more difficult to... For, especially for the, the, you know, the passing viewer. Yeah, no, it's a, and it's a fair point. I think that was kind of the, um, that was the MO, for, especially for um, you know, the CME group. They wanted everyone to be on the same page to have a chance. I, I did hear a couple of kind of analysts talking about the fact that if you're the 60th player, you're going in there with nothing to lose. Mm. And they felt like that potentially put the, put the luck in their hands because they were kind of dangerous mm. in that regard. What do you think mm. about that, Fouts? I like, I like the thought that you've just got to get to the grand final and then 
that's it. I mean, you set up your season, you want to get to that last tournament, and then you're in with a chance. Well, every other sport in the world is like that. Yeah. So that's, you know, exactly. I mean, golf has never traditionally been that, and it's just changing that mindset. Yeah. But I think it does help the, the fans, the viewer. particularly, and the viewer, the and really the casual fan. They can turn on the screen, and when you go back to the Tour Championship, it's there's, it's just the scores, and that's, that's right. it. They're not looking at points or trying to figure all that out. Yeah. So Yeah, the person who raises their hands at the end of the day is the one that walks away right. with the big check. Yeah. Mm. And I think there's a reason they're 1 to 10. And the reason they're 50 to 60. Mm. I mean, they've been better players through yep. the year. I think over a four-round uh, tournament, the chances of the 1 to 10 players are coming through are going to rise dramatically over the 50 to 60 players. Yeah, well, Just I'm, an opinion. I'm, no, but I'm actually with you. I have to say, you know, uh, Mike Wan, um, the LPJ commissioner, said that his wife said, it, this feels like a major. Everyone in all of the, like, the player rooms, everyone was switched on. There was, mm. there was a palpable kind of energy and, and tension in the air. Great. And whenever that happens, I think the best players rise to the top. Um, we ended up seeing that in the end with a pretty incredible leaderboard on the final day. <laughs> incredible finish, too. And an unbelievable finish that went down. Imagine, like, the whole season going down to one putt. Oh. Is that that's I mean and it did dream, isn't and it? it happened on the European tour and it happened you know on the on the LPGA as well um, with Say Young Kim holding a 25 foot sloping left to right putt on the last with Unreal. a charging um, Charlie Hull coming up behind her walked it in as well cool. it was a beauty wasn't it <laughs> and she's she's a cool customer she's yeah. someone that is really easy for anyone that meets her is a fan. She's just, she's relaxed. She's really open to people walking up and having a chat with her. Um, she speaks a, a reasonable amount of English. She's not f fluent yet, but she doesn't have to be. Um, but in, just in terms of the way that, you know, she can, she can integrate herself with fans around the world. And fantastic to see not only her perform so well under the gun, but Suo take the next sort of big step. Because as you say, it felt like a major. There was a lot of cash on the line and Suo played four really consistent rounds. Tied six. What did you make of that? I, you know what, Sue is a, a player that's underperformed on her talent, in my opinion. Um, she's every bit as good as, as Hannah and um, Hannah Green and, and Minji Lee when she's playing well. Um, I think a lot of what's happened with Sue has been kind of management in terms of her game. I think she kind of, the problem is it's all trial and error. Um, golf, you, you go with a coach, you think it's going to work and then you might find out a year and a half later that maybe what you were working on was either counterproductive or something like that. I think she's really settled with her team now. She mm. works with um, Dana Dahlquist, who's based mm. out of LA, um, Kat Kirk as well, another person that's worked with him. And she just seems really happy with the direction that they're taking at the moment, and I think that's going to lead to some pretty good things. I think as we hit 10 towards Women's Australian Open in February, Justin, that it's awesome to see Suo, Hannah Green, Minji Lee, and to a lesser extent, Catherine Kirk, uh, really flying the flag. We've got three young women, they're very young still, at the pointy end of the world rankings. Mm. They're really going places and I think that's a real fillet for Australian golf in the future, for, especially for young women uh, aspiring to get to the top of the game. It's going to be super exciting next year in February. Obviously Hannah coming back as a major champion for the first time and Minji also won the LPGA Tour this year and uh, Hannah had another win in Portland too. So you're right. We've got three really, really, really top players uh, all coming back sort of still so young it's going to be super exciting and we're in a good place on the LPJ tour yeah I think we're in the best place in women's Australian golf and we've been in a, in a very long time yeah, um, and that's saying something because we've had obviously some incredible players Kari <laughs> Webb you know Rachel Hetherington um, Shani War I mean it, it's a really long list to go yeah. back to but um, no it's, it's going to be fun now Ali can I put you on the spot and ask yes. you a question oh yeah I love it when you do this uh -huh. <laughs> uh, without warning it's, it was a very big week in women's golf for another reason as well the LPJ tour and the LET got it together and there's going to be a, a, a radical restructure of the second tier of women's golf. There, yeah, there is. Um, so there was a meeting, the AGM um, was held on Tuesday night uh, Spanish time over uh, in Malaga and um, Mike Wan flew over there to kind of pitch, pitch his suggestions to the LET and that ha has been an interesting um, and, and quite... Uh, oh, dangerous is an interesting word for it, but I mean, it, it hasn't always been the smoothest transition, um, any talks between the LPGA and the LET, and I think so much of that comes from the, the concept that the LET players don't want to lose their identity mm. um, and the identity of the tour, because when you're a part of a tour, you feel like you're one of the caretakers because you're the people that are voting, you're in the room, and you're, you're the ones making the calls that you don't want to regret kind of looking five years back. Um, so I feel like that was rule number one for the LET was just, Keep, keep it either as the LET or something similar um, and then try and get as much help as they could, which um, I've, got to, I've got to take my cap off to the LPGA and Mike Wan. Um, 
they, they did their drive on campaign at the start of the year. Um, and the catchphrase was, this is for every girl. And they really lived up to it this week. He went over, he, he like, I can't really go into the specifics of what the pitch is. I'm sure that, that'll be made public um, shortly, but it, it would have been a tough crowd for him. He stood up there. He was charismatic as ever. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, he, and he sold it. I think it was a 90% positive yeah. vote. Wow. That, that's amazing considering where that feeling, that sentiment about that sort of vote would have been even three or four years ago. So it's a huge radical restructure, I think. So the LET and the Symmetra tours are going to basically come together? Uh, I think it's going to be... They're, they're still trying to work it out. So essentially they're going to look at the LET and there's probably going to be places, instead of going uh, straight into the LPGA, it'll most likely be uh, to the final stage of Q Series and get an automatic entry. And from there, Mike One believes that, the, you know, the best players in the LET have about a 50-50 chance, historically speaking, when you look back um, on the stats. But I think that's going to take a little bit of, of reworking. Um, but the LET have announced... Um, they're, they're doing the race to the Costa, Cel Costa del Sol next year, which is a prize pool that will be split up between the top three on the LET. It is massive because there's very little incentive for girls to want to stay on the LET if, mm. if, at the, as it currently stands. They don't have enough playing opportunities and they want to play in Europe. Yeah. I mean, if everyone that's European wants to stay in mm. Europe and play in Europe and we just need to keep building opportunities for them to do that and this is a huge step in that direction, I think. We've been one of the great beneficiaries of the LPGA going global, coming down here every year. When we talked about the Australian girls that are coming down for uh, next February, but every year we get the Nelly Quarters, the JY Co's, the, the best players all come down and play. So mm. uh, a more global tour uh, as for women's golf, it's definitely going to be a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what else do we have to chat about? Oh. Before we, we do our little run around around the globe, and we're oh, going to do some Australian Open um, that's predictions. And I'm excited for these. Well, this is... This is the, the preview to arguably the biggest week in Australian golf. So um, I reckon we should hit it now, Ellie. Yeah, we're going to go. Who, we're going to embarrass gonna lead, ourselves. Who's going to lead off? Hazy, do you want to go first? Sure. All right. So well, we've, we've, I'll embarrass we've myself asked. first. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, you won't be this, embarrassed. This won't until... be recorded anywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, no one will hear it. Uh, and you won't be embarrassed until next Sunday, so it's fine. So you've, got, a, you've got another 10 days to, to just cool <laughs> I hang my head. a little while. Exactly. All right. So the, the, the deal was um, two front runners and a bit of a roughy pick. Mm -hmm. So hit us with your best shot, Hazy. Come on. Adam Scott. Adam Scott's going to win the second Stonehaven Cup. One in 2009 at New South Wales. Uh, I think he's coming in on the back of some really good form on the PGA Tour at this time of year for the first time in a long time. Uh, I think he's tuned and ready to go. And there's been no one uh, more focused on the President's Cup than him for the last, I think, on both sides of golf for the last 10 or 12 years. And I think he wants to be in peak form for that because I think he thinks this is probably his last chance at getting it over the line. So I think he's coming here primed. Uh, he's been close a few times since 2009. This is his shot. My second pick, Ellie, Matt Jones. Uh, I'm sticking mm. with the Aussies. I know there's a lot of good international um, players coming, but Matt Jones, um, a specialist at the Australian Golf Club, but won there in 2015, was close again in 2017. Doesn't get to come back very often, but had such a great year on the PGA Tour in 2019 that he set himself up with a better card for 2020. Uh, so he's come back fresh. He gets to see Gary Barter at his home club, sleep in his own bed, loves it, brings the family out, just loves being at home in Sydney. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be a red-hot contender. And my roughie, go little Min Woo Lee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's got such a lot to prove early in the season and what better way to get it rolling. Um, and he's got a game that would suit the Australian. If he, if he gets it rolling, he smashes the ball. It's a big hitter's course, we know that. I'm on your Min. Earned a Saturday pairing, I reckon, two years ago with Jordan Spieth, I think it was. Oh, yeah. In work. True, true. I mean, he was still an amateur then, and I remember thinking that was, that was a pretty amazing experience for him. I know he enjoyed it. and yeah. So he's done it in the big time at the Australian in the Aussie Open, so... Yeah, fair pick, fair pick. And, you know, I feel like he's coming in with a little bit of, of heat under the collar yeah. as well because, uh, because of how his, his season ended this year. He had an incredible season playing his way uh, essentially into a nearly full card on the European Tour, um, ended up sitting out some events at the end and then got pipped at the post for, um, for total status in the European Tour. And I know that was a pretty bitter pill to swallow. Sure was. So he's going to be coming in uh, red hot. I reckon you should pass the buck up the table right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me. Me. Who's, who's up next, boys? Matt, take it away. Okay, you want me to take it away? Um, well, I'm going to 
I'm going to focus on the on the President's Cup team players, really, for, uh, from, Very from clever my perspective. Of you, you know, just because of the, I mean, you look at the field at the Australian Open; it's just unbelievable. There's uh, at the top end. There's so many guys that could win that win that event. But I'm going to start with Louis Tyson. I really think that uh, you know he's he's in top form right now. He just hasn't won as much, and he hasn't won in a while. But I mean, I think he's. Uh, He's ready to come down and play really well in the President's Cup, but I know he wants to play really well at the Australian His Open. His swing's well, very so similar to yours. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I think he's got one of the best swings in the world, so that would not be similar to mine. Uh. So, um, not even close. But uh, I think he's uh, he's coming in ready to ready to play well. Um, and my my second's going to be uh, Adam Scott. I agree with you, Mark. I mean, he he's done everything but win in the last year. You know, I mean, he's played so well on the PGA Tour, and you know, uh, for him to do so well at the Tour Championship all the way through, I mean, he just hasn't gotten across the line, and I think he's primed and ready to do, it, to do that. Um, he loves the President's Cup, you know, and I know he's 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 wants to get ready for that. So, mm. and he's, he's been focused for a long time, and he's taken on that leadership role within that team to, to do that. So, I think coming in, and he loves the Australian Open. He wants to, I think he wants to win that again. So, um, right there, and my, my roughie, uh, <laughs> Would be uh, captain's assistant Jeff Ogilvy. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, he hasn't played a lot of golf, but uh, I think he's hungry. He wants to play. He made that hole in one last week at the yeah. um, in, <laughs> at the, the walk off yeah, hole. Yeah, yeah, how about that? <laughs> um, so uh, he's getting and he gets excited about this stuff. So um, I think he's going to go in and play well, better than he probably expects. So anyway, that's a big roughy. But uh, you know, he hasn't played a lot this year, so. We'll see how we go. I'm, I'm really glad to hear Matt using the word roughy. I know. What's the, what would you <laughs> usually refer to it as? A roughy outsider? <laughs> An outsider, yeah. Outsider, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, John like Huggenman just can't still get over the fact that yeah. we call him Ruffy. He thinks <laughs> it's a fish. He's so. cringing right now. <laughs> so we'll kudos. throw a couple more roughy yeah. references in for you, just for you, Huggy. Um, Falks? <laughs> I'm with Matt. Pick number one, I had Louis Stazen as well. He's finished... Third in China a few weeks ago, then sixth in South Africa, and then he had another top 20 in Dubai. And that's right, he's in great form and he wants to play well in the President's Cup, but uh, we'd love to see him come to Sydney and play well as well. He won in Australia, in Perth, in 2016, and I, I was picking with my heart. I'd love to see Lou win. He's a legend and hopefully, hopefully he's on there. I was thinking, I mean, if we have a couple of these guys, any of the names mentioned, in the hunt Sunday afternoon. We're going to be in for an absolute treat. And judging by the field, yeah. we hopefully we'll have at least two or three of those guys. He's one of those guys that you get the feeling that the, the Aussie fans could really latch on to, yeah. Louis. You know, he's kind of, he's got a little bit of that swag about him, but just mm. the way that he goes about his work uh, yeah. on the golf course, you mm. could see the crowd swelling in his direction. I think as far as the international team to go to the President's Cup, there's about a handful of guys like that, that Louis oh, yeah. and How Tong Lee's hilarious. And Abe Anser last year, he was he was brilliant at the lakes. And, I yeah. mean, it was almost over with a day to go, as over as a golf tournament can be. But there's so many likeable characters on that team that hopefully the Aussie crowd see these guys in Sydney and then by the time we get to Melbourne, we're right behind them. Moving on, pick number two, Cam Smith. He finished fourth at the Australian two years ago. He shot four rounds in the 60s, so he knows his way around the joint. And, of course, runner-up the year before in Sydney, at Royal Sydney, to Jordan Spieth. So... He flew the flag for us last year being down here and he didn't really, he probably didn't get out of second or third gear at the lakes. But you know how much he and I guess all the other guys, Leash and Jason as well, want to get a first Stonehaven Cup. But, I mean, he's in good form and he set himself for this summer. A President's Cup for him has been a goal. It's been a lifelong goal for Cam Smith. So you know that he wants to be playing well this time of year. And I would love to see Cam Smith up there on Sunday afternoon. And my roughie is I'm going to the amateur wanks. I'm going to the world number one. Takumi Kanaya, my man. Wow. He, yeah. He's my man, Hazy, and don't you forget. Yeah. <laughs> he's, we get a couple of the Japanese players come out each year, thanks to Gareth Jones and their program over the air. And Takumi, he's the world number one at the moment. He's won the Asia-Pacific Amateur two years ago. He lost it in a playoff this year in Shanghai and was brutally unlucky to lose to Eugene Lin. But he plays like he's a professional golfer. He's been under Hideki Matsuyama's wing for a couple of years now at college over there in the United States and he won on the Japan Tour a couple of weeks ago at the, the Taihayo Masters, I believe it's called, Hazy. Impressive. Taihayo? So Taihayo. he's already... He's already oh, yeah, well, <laughs> Good job. <laughs> he's already won a professional <laughs> tournament, world number one, finished T19 at the Australian two years ago and he shot 65 on Saturday in the third round and standing on the 10th tee, he reeled off six birdies in the eight next, next eight holes, so... That's good enough for me. Yikes, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and the Aussie connection as well there with, uh, exactly. with Gareth Jones, who's been one of the, well, the state coaches, one of the national coaches, mm. um, 
grew up in South Australia and mm -hmm. he's taken the reins in the in the Japan Golf Association um, pretty much the whole way through yeah. um, in terms of their, their high performance. So um, great to have that connection. My, my prediction. This is the big yeah. one. The only um, one on the panel, sorry, Matt, but with any credibility. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's well, I had I zero. Actually, <laughs> you heard it in my picks. So I tried to pick guys that you hadn't already picked because I'm not a bandwagon kind of person. So I'm going to go all in on Paul Casey. Yeah. So world number 14, um, 42 years of age. He's won twice on the PGA Tour in the last two seasons. He's gone up eight spots in the world rankings um, in the last five months. And I just think that Aussie golf courses are going to get his mind ticking. You know, mm. it's, it's, it's a different style of golf. And for some people, you can see that, it, that there's a different part of their brain that gets activated by Australian golf. And, and he's won a New South Wales golf course um, as well. I think that was in the early 2000s, um, not far away from where we're playing the Australian Open uh, this year at the Australian Golf Club. But I just, I don't know, I feel like he's, a, he's probably the front runner. He's also one of the best ranked players. <laughs> Yeah. In the field, so maybe yeah. it's not a surprise. Yeah, way to go out on a limb there, Ellie. <laughs> Is he the time? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, nothing, nothing quite like a four-time Ryder Cup player <laughs> 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 to really, you know, brand, break your break your brain. Um, my number two is actually a little bit. A little bit of an outsider, and you don't usually say that of a former world number one, um, in Jason Day. So he's my pick number two. The reason I'm picking Jason, he doesn't have a lot of form, really, in the last eight months coming into this week. Um, but he does have a lot of form at the Australian. Uh, I followed him round there uh, in the final round two years ago, two years, in 2017, yeah. um, who's playing alongside Lucas Herbert in the final round, and, and he was leading going into the final round. It just fell... He, he didn't really do anything wrong, but he just didn't have anything right for him. Mm. In final round 73, that kind of just looked really flat. Mm. Um, he has so many good memories around that golf course, and I do think there's, there's a little bit of an anomaly at the Australian because... The wind is really hard to read because it's actually... There's sections of the golf course that sit in little bowls mm. and, you know, we talk about, like, at, at the... Um, at the BMW PGA on the European Tour at Wentworth, guys have a wind map. So they actually have a full map for, for the wind as to if it's coming out of this direction, how it's going to affect this hole because it might be behind you and then you walk straight ahead and it's coming from the side somehow. And I think the Australian kind of has that that similar enigma to it. So, yeah, I reckon Jason Day is, is a one to watch. You've had have, I, have I justified it? Yeah. <laughs> Jury's out, I reckon. <laughs> OK, that's all right. We can, yeah, two-time two Greg Norman medal winner. Uh, what else? The Don Award. I can throw out some other awards, but quite frankly, it comes down to recent form. Um, my Ruffy has plenty of it, and we mentioned him earlier, uh, Jason Scrivener. Um, oh, yeah, right. He's a <laughs> an incredible player. He's from he's from Mandra in Western Australia, but his uh, his coach is Gary Barter as well, who coaches out of the Australian Golf Club. Now, two years ago in 2017, he made the decision to not play Hong Kong on the European Tour because he wanted to play at the Australian. Mm. And I feel like whenever you have that mind frame, mm. um, it's usually going to work uh, in your favour. But he's a guy. He's he's come down 79 spots in the world rankings. In the last three weeks, seventy nine. Yeah, that's amazing. In three weeks, so you know, um, he's only twenty odd spots off his best ever world ranking. So I just feel like he's trending in the right direction. So Scriv, I am behind you all the way. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive. I like that. The specs. That was a far better I selling. You're going to give me a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! Like, you. Congratulations! You sold Thanks, that guys. very well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty risky from us to have like a world class guest on and then none of us to predict his uh, top three finish here. It's. Uh, I don't know if Leash will have anything to say about that. I'm <laughs> not sure if we'd be brave enough to ask, to be honest. I think he'd be he'd be an obvious choice, but do we always do the obvious choices? Really? Apparently not. It's, ama it's amazing <laughs> to me that our big four we have they have one Stonehaven Cup between them. Yeah. Day Leishman, Smith, and Scott. Okay. Let's uh, talk a little bit about that in terms of how. So the way that the PGA Tour is scheduled, a lot of the guys by the time they get to the Australian season, mm. they're looking for some downtime yeah. and they're not always coming in fresh. And, and that was part of the reason why it fed into Jason Day. Because of the President's Cup the week after, I actually think he's he's prepping for the President's Cup. He's had back injuries um, throughout the year. He actually did, um, he's been doing balloon, what is it, balloon breathing this year? <laughs> Okay, just come, come, take with your me. Word for it. come with me on this tangent. Um, so what he's actually been doing is, I think it's like, it, it, so it's balloon therapy and he does it for 20 to 30 minutes a day and he breathes in and out of a balloon to expand his rib cage, which apparently takes the pressure off his back. Poor. So, 
That's what I've been doing, but it's not been sort of <laughs> uh, trending <laughs> south and not up. There weren't helium balloons, so oh, I, should, I should point no, that out. Okay, not at all, empty. But anyway, so I feel like he's coming in. But yeah. it is a, it's a tricky part of the season for a lot of our Aussie guys. Yeah. And talk a, a little bit about the pressure that's kind of on them to come back and perform. Yeah, and it, there's no doubt about that. And as you say, they're not necessarily at the peak of their powers. They're trying to do that in the middle of the, ne- the North American summer, basically. Um, so it is, it's, a, it's a big thing this year to have all these guys tapering towards the President's Cup. So I think, not. I mean, it's going to be tough to make a case against Sergio Garcia, who we didn't mention, who's in great form. Um, Paul Casey, you did mention, and, and others of that ilk. Um, they've come at the end of a really long European season and they're in good nick. But we're going to see <clears throat> half a dozen, seven people at, at, in Sydney, not to mention the President's Cup vice-captains, who are hell-bent on being at their absolute best the week after. And that's something that we don't often see from the top echelon of the field of the Australian Open. So, I don't know, to, to me it all goes for a classic. Mm. And uh, Justin and I had the pleasure of going up a couple of weeks ago and I tell you, Ali, that Australian is looking mint. I absolutely mint. They take great pleasure in this. The 21st edition of the Australian Open that's been held at the Australian Golf Club in its various settings and guises, but um, the honour roll that, we, that you filmed... And, yeah. And we put out on a couple of videos his next level at this club. It always has a great champion. Um, I think that we're in for something special and then the course will play its role as well. Yeah, well, it's the, it's the course in Australia that's hosted the most Australian Opens, Correct, I yep. think. And so that's just kind of increasing its lead at the, at yeah. the top in terms of that. But it, it has been a stalwart of yeah. Australian Open golf. I'm safe to say it's... What is it, roughly about 10 k's out of uh, yep. Sydney CBD, a little bit south down by the airport. So if you're in the area next week, go and grab a ticket. Yeah, buy your tickets. Um, it is legitimately a world-class field. Um, we often get accused of saying that and it's not. <laughs> I know that's a shock to some people. But this one is. Um, you could stack this up on the PGA Tour any week of oh, the no. year and it would actually hold its own. Uh, we're really proud of that. Um, happy to you know, be part of a three-week spread with the P- President's Cup and the PGA Tour. But the Open's going to be very special. It's going to be huge. Matt, have you been to an Aussie Open before? I've never been to an Aussie Open. Yeah. No, no, not, not true. I, I went to the lakes. I went up uh, when, uh, I think it was in 2011. I went up for the, yeah, George Bag had me up there. So the Lake George Bag. But, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, we better clear the decks, Ellie, and get ready for... For our special guest. hunker down. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we've got plenty more to come after the break. Uh, we're going to be talking to Mark Leishman, which, as we said earlier, is never a bad thing. You've been watching Inside the Ropes, brought to you by Drummond's Golf, Australia's biggest. Stick around. The Golf Australia website is now the place to go to look up your handicap and so much more. Whether you're out and about on your phone or in the office trying to avoid work, just go to golf.org.au and punch your golf link number into the box at the top of the homepage. Who knows, maybe that last round was just good enough to put you in single figures. While you're on the site, check out the daily golf results at your club, view our course index for up-to-date ratings, read the latest golf news from home and abroad, listen to Australian golf podcasts and interviews and watch video tournament highlights or tips to improve your game. It's everything a golf tragic could want. Visit golf.org.au today. The home of Australian golf. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 130 of Inside the Ropes. This segment I've been looking forward to for quite a while. Any time you get a chance to talk to the next bloke that we're about to have a chat with is always a good one, isn't it, Hazy? It is, It is, Ali, and, and Leash is a, a regular on the podcast and volunteered his services here today, so I'm really, really grateful that he's uh, put his hand up and it's his last official duty, I think, in the United States before he heads home. Oh, how good. Yeah, well, without... Further ado, we should uh, introduce Mas- Mark Leishman uh, to the show. Mark, where do we find you at the moment? Uh, I'm in Virginia Beach at the moment, so I'm at home. Um, cold weather's set in, uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow, so just uh, getting ready for the, the big tra- trip back to, uh, to Melbourne on Friday. So, yeah, excited to, uh, to head back. You, say, you come into Melbourne, you, you grew up in Warrnambool. Are you going to go back to Warrnambool First, or, or what's what's the travel plans for uh, Friday onwards? No, so I fly uh, I fly from Dallas to Sydney and then um, Sydney down to Melbourne. I've got a uh, got a duty on the uh, I'm actually cutting the grass at the MCG on uh, on Monday morning before the last day of the uh, the Shield game and then playing Royal <laughs> Melbourne Monday afternoon. 
um, getting ready for the President's Cup, and then I'll head up to um, head up to Sydney on Tuesday morning to to prepare for the Australian Open. So big few days, but uh, it's all all fun stuff coming up. The buzz leash around the Australian Open is huge. Um, it's great to see arguably the best field we've had in 25 years. Um, you know, it's going to be especially awesome to have yourself, Scotty, uh, Jay Day and Cam Smith, the, I guess the big four of Australian golf back on home soil. You must be pumped for it. Yeah, I am. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's a tournament that you want to play every year, but, you know, every year it doesn't, doesn't fit in, unfortunately. But uh, this year is, is perfect. Um, good lead-up to the President's Cup. Um, it's on an awesome golf course. I love the Australian. Um, and the field is, yeah, like you said, the best we've had for quite a while. So uh, lots to look forward to. Um, hopefully I can play and, and try and uh, try and lift that trophy at the end of the week. Leach, was there, there's quite a big international um, team presence next week. Was, was that something that was fed down? Was that a message that kind of came from Ernie that he, he wanted players to come out and play the Oz Open early? Yeah, yeah, definitely. He, um, you know, he wanted us to, to go and, you know, play in the conditions that, that Australia uh, presents. Um, it's pretty different so over here. You know, the wind's a lot heavier. Uh, the grasses are different. Um, it's just, it's a very different um, style of golf. So to get a a week um, a week extra practice um, and to play for a, such a prestigious event um, and hopefully, like I said, play well, get get under some pressure and um, try and get any competitive juices flowing. Um, it's uh, yeah, pretty pretty exciting times for. For me, particularly, you know, I haven't played there since 2015 and um, in, in the Australian Open, so it's nice to get back there and uh, and try and um, try and have a good week. Mark, does it help having a tournament that obviously you want to play so well in? It's your national open, and you haven't won it yet. Is it sort of the perfect lead up for the President's Cup, a tournament where you, this pressure is going to be on, hopefully, uh, on Sunday afternoon, because that means you'll be in the mix? Is it kind of the perfect lead up tournament to what is another big week in your home state at the President's Cup? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, the the course is obviously going to be different, but, you know, similar wind conditions and that sort of thing. Um, you know, like I spoke about, the wind's a lot heavier in Australia. and I guess you don't quite understand that until you leave um, and, and play over here. You don't really even have to take it into account too much. Um, but, yeah, and, you know, probably having it in Sydney is going to be a good thing too. Um, It's going to be intense, but not too intense. I think it was on a sand belt course. I think a lot of the Americans would have come over as well. Um, and maybe that's going to be a good thing for us. You know, we need to have a, have a really good week. Uh, we, we need to play well to, to compete against those guys. And I think playing the week before is definitely going to give us our best chance to do that. At least you know all about the, the history of the Stonehaven Cup. What would it mean to get your name on the, on the trophy that's, I guess, the most keenly sought in Australian golf? Yeah, it'd be uh, unbelievable. There's, uh, you know, all the great Australian golfers have, well, pretty much all have won, won that tournament. Um, it's certainly one that I, uh, I would love to get my name on. Uh, you know, I don't want to put any extra pressure on myself. You know, <laughs> just because it's, it's hard when you're standing on the first tee with, you know, there's 155 other guys trying to win the same tournament. Um, you know, you have to play very well to win it, and um, to put that pressure on yourself in the first tee. Uh, it's probably not the best thing for your golf game, but um, yeah, I'd definitely like to um, to get my name on that uh, at some point in my career. And um, next week's as good a time as any, I suppose. Leash, you've played at the Australian Golf Club before. One of the well, it's arguably the oldest Australian golf club um, in the, in the nation. What did you learn last time around that you're going to put into play um, when you play it next week? Yeah, I, it, it changed a lot um, from. Last time, I guess they'd, they'd pulled a lot of trees out, and that was after the, the redo. Um, I didn't play well at all. I think I played a little bit too conservatively. Um, you know, there's some holes there where you can take different lines now than what you could um, back in 2000 and or well, the late 2000, I guess, um, you know, before 2010. There, um, you know, there was like the seventh, I think it is. You know, you hit the three iron to the corner and then a six iron into the green. I remember. Last year, you know, it was a driver straight over the corner and then you're chipping onto the green. So that changed. Um, so it's just 
preparing for that and um, I think preparation is pretty big around that course because, you know, the wind direction can change. You know, in practice rounds, you're hitting a three iron and a five iron and then, you know, the conditions change and you have no idea where the line is for driver. So um, just lines off tees um, is probably the, the main thing for me and I'm not putting too much pressure on myself early on in the tournament. Um, I didn't play well there in 2015 when I played there last time and um, but I have played well there in the past just you know when I first turned pro I, I remember having some pretty good memories there so um, I'd like to create a few more next week. Mark obviously such a strong field this year we've got Sergio Garcia coming, Paul Casey, Luis Tazen and uh, Ernie himself is even playing. Does it make it more exciting coming knowing that you're playing against guys that you go up against on the PGA Tour each week? It's obviously going to make it a bit harder for you to win the Stonehaven Cup but is it a bit more buzz uh, coming down here this time around? Yeah, for sure. Um, and probably, if anything, it takes a bit of pressure off uh, off the Australian guys too because, you know, people are looking at um, Paul Casey, like Sergio Garcia, you know, all the other guys in the President's Cup team, Ernie. Um, you know, there's so many guys that have got a chance to win this and then there's a lot of Australian guys um, that, you know, obviously want to win it too. So we... Um, it probably takes a little bit of pressure off us, which, which is nice. Uh, we can just concentrate on, on heading out there and, and trying to play some good golf, you know, give the crowd something to cheer about and hopefully, uh, you know, like I said before, getting a, getting a chance to, uh, to have a putt to, to win the Australian Open. That would be, uh, that would be a pretty, pretty successful week, I think, having that chance. Oh, that's the dream, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it is, yeah. Leash, I'm going to take your left field. You wouldn't come on inside the ropes if we didn't give you a left field question, so... You, um, the, the history of the President's Cup is that it's said that the international team becomes a really good team by about Saturday night, which puts the pressure on this time, all you guys in Sydney sort of getting together and having a couple of quiet beverages, uh, presumably adult beverages. Is that the case? Is that going to be a problem <laughs> for you? And uh, also, I, I understand there's another Leishman Lager about to hit our streets. <laughs> yes, there is. Um, so... To answer the first part of your question, I think it, it is pretty important for us to spend some time together the week before. Um, Ernie's actually made it reasonably clear that he, that's not the way to go about it, is the, the alcohol. Um, <laughs> I think we just need to spend quality time together. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty important for us to bond before the before the week, before we get to Melbourne. That would be, that would be ideal, you know, if we can have that... Uh, that team bonding, you know, we can get all that done next week in Sydney, uh, make it feel like a bit of a team environment there. Um, I think that's going to do us well for Melbourne. Um, and then as far as the Leishman Lager goes, yeah, we've got a, um, a, a beer coming out, Leishman Lager, obviously, um, in Melbourne. We've got, we've got it over here, uh, so it's going to be... A, an Australian version, a little different product than we've got over here, but uh, it's going to be a, a mid-strength beer and, you know, one that you can um, have a few beers after golf and, um, you know, as long as you don't go too silly, you can still drive home. So uh, <laughs> that would be, um, that's, that's the idea behind it, you know, having, at least having a couple of beers, you know, because at the you know, when I'm at home, um, you know, you have two beers at the golf club when you finish golf and, and you can't drive home. Um, so... You know, it would be nice to at least be able to have a couple and feel somewhat safe, you know, heading back. Not that I would ever endorse drinking and driving. Drink responsibly, of course. But if you do want to have a couple, you, you know, you can have a couple and, and not be anywhere near that 0.05 mark. So that's, that was the thinking behind it. So I understand that you're also going to be distributing this around the Warrnambool Port Ferry area in the in the medium to long term. That's going to be a, a big hit, I would imagine, with your, your mates at home. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be, um, we've got a few different phases happening and um, early stages, it's going to be in a, in a few venues around Melbourne, around Melbourne, um, and but mostly around the Western District of Victoria. Um, and then, you know, we'll see how it goes down there and uh, how far we take it, but yeah, hopefully within the year it will be um, at a lot of places around Melbourne and um, eventually, you know, who knows where it could go. Leash, we know you're no stranger to team golf here in Australia. You played with Adam in 2016 at the World Cup and, of course, Cam last year at Metropolitan. Has there been any word from Ernie on pairings who you think you might be playing with uh, at the President's Cup at Royal? Are we going to see you with Cam? I think anyone who saw you play there last year 
uh, would know that that was a super successful pairing. And, of course, Adam's played with Jason in 2013. Has there been any word on pairings and who we might see teaming up? Um, Ernie's been big on statistics, actually. So um, he has he's kept it pretty close to his chest. Um, it's, uh, he hasn't really told us. Um, so it's going to be... I would assume that, I'll, yeah, I'll, what you just said, that, you know, it'd be Jace and, and Scotty and Cam and myself. Um, but he hasn't he hasn't really told us, so that's what we're assuming. Um, but, you know, I guess what he's going to tell us the week of. I guess he wants to keep it pretty close to his chest. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen there. So, But that's what I would be thinking. Ali, um, I'm more interested to ask more. At least I know we're running out of time here, but uh, about what Ernie's saying reasonably strongly to stay off the, the grog. That's that's <laughs> that's my big one. I, I can't imagine getting on the wrong side of Ernie. So, you, you know, we're in for a treat to see all these guys up in Sydney next week, aren't we? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And, you know, one last question, Leash. Who's coming? Who's in your yep. posse that's coming with you to Sydney uh, next week? In my team? Yeah. Who's coming along with you? Who are you bringing down under? In Sydney, um, so I've got uh, my mum and dad are coming up from Warrnambool. They're going to be in Sydney. Uh, I've got a chiropractor coming with me uh, who works with a few guys on the tour. So um, I've had a few back issues. Um, so he's coming. Um, Dennis will be there and um, a caddy Maddie. So apart from that, there's going to be that, that's it in Sydney. Uh, in Melbourne, there's, that's going to be a different story. There's going to be <laughs> my whole family, uh, Audrey, the kids. Uh, mum and dad, there's going to be yeah, every man and their dog there, so it's going to be fun. <laughs> oh, well, we'll be grilling you a little bit more about the President's Cup in a few moments, but that's it from the Aussie Open front. Uh, always great to chat with you, Mark Leishman, Inside the Ropes. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, I'm Minji Lee, and I'm proud to be an ambassador for MyGolf, Australian Golf's national junior program. One of my favourite things about coming back to Australia is seeing all the kids getting into golf. My golf is every Aussie kid's first step on their golfing pathway. It's all about fun and friendship, learning golf and life skills in a safe and healthy environment. So, if your child is between 5 and 12 years old, be sure to find a program near you at mygolf.org.au. Welcome back, everyone, to our Australian Open preview show. Uh, Emirates Australian Open, I should say. Um, plenty of exciting stuff going on, aside from, you know, we've talked about our predictions already. But there's an event within the event that mm. is, is quite special and quite unique uh, in the Australian All Abilities Championship. And, it, and it's got twists and turns again this year. Yeah, it has. It's, it's gone to the next level, the Australian All Abilities Championship. Uh, we announced a new sponsor this week, Ali. The ISPS Handy team has come on board again. They're the, you know, arguably the most uh, long-standing and, and, you know, it's hard to find the right words to put on what ISPS Hand has meant to Australian golf and continues to. So really big shout out to them for, for getting behind what has become a global sensation. The Australian All Abilities Championship, we have new field this year in terms of uh, the world rankings for disabled golf have come into effect, which means we have people from North America as well as Europe and Australia in the field. So 12 elite players, um, one of which I know in particular, one of whom has caught your eye. Well, yeah, it's the first time that we've had a, a woman in the field. Yeah. Um, Daphne Van Houten will be uh, teeing it up alongside the guys. And, and, and it's important to mention that this is played within the Australian Open and it's, and it's off the Australian Open tees mm. as well. Like, this isn't, there's, no, there's no shortened course here. It's, no. it's off the tips under immense pressure and what an opportunity it is for and, so many of these players. And last year, Johan Kummerstad, who mm. went on to be the inaugural champion of the Australian All Abilities Championship, Shot a 73 on the final day in brutal conditions at the lakes. Was better than 25% of the able-bodied field. Um, you know, next level off the back tees with various um, disabilities. But, you know, it was really moving, wasn't it, Justin? To yeah. See, to see all the stories unfold. And I know that we've got a couple of new special ones. I was reading a great story on, on Canadian... Um, I've forgotten his name. Curtis Barkley um, coming out. Um, he had severe scoliosis through, the, through his life and... Um, the story that he's putting forward, at, among others, is, is unbelievable. Yeah, I think what we found, obviously, we're heavily involved with the media side of the Australian Open. The, some of the hype that we were getting for the first All Abilities Championship last year was bigger, if not more, than the Aussie Open. People were just fascinated. And, I mean, we had players on the range videoing the All Abilities players just, like, in awe of how they swing the golf club. Yeah. And, some of them you've got to be able to see to believe. It's They're quite amazing. And 
it's exciting to have a field this year really based on some of the best players. I mean, there's some amazing players that have missed out this year. Um, so we're going to have a great field. And uh, as we said, playing uh, groups in between uh, the Australian Open field, uh, it's a great chance to see these guys play and girls. And it's going to be awesome this year. Yeah, Daphne Van Houten, the first woman in 104 years of the championship. Matt, um, the Australian All Abilities Championship dovetailed last year with the, the ISPS and uh, Disabled Golf Cup at the yep. World Cup. And it's going again at the President's Cup, that's going to be even uh, a massive feather in your cap as well. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I think, you know, on the heels of what happened last year, but also when you go back to ISPS Hand and what they have done for disabled golf and, you know, the uh, progression of that. But I think uh, exciting that they are our um, Australian charity partner for the President's Cup and they are uh, also the sponsor for the Disabled Golf Cup that will happen on the Friday after the play on the on Royal Melbourne Golf Course uh, where you'll have a team from that's made up of non-Australians versus a team of Australians. So six Australians versus six of the players. So all 12 of them will be playing, which is it's Australia versus the rest of the world, so to speak. So it'll be pretty cool. And he's been all about crowd getting behind the international team. Wait to hear what they get behind the Aussie team there. They will be <laughs> all, Oh, they all will, over. yeah. They did last year with the, with the, at the World yeah. Cup, so hopefully they'll do it again this year. Yeah. It's going to be hard to sledge a few of our... Uh, Disabled Golf Cup players, isn't it, <laughs> from an Australian perspective? But we might manage it somehow. That's just how rough and brutal we are, really. Yeah, no, it should be good, and hopefully we'll keep everyone kind of abreast of all of the news um, that week. I know that Bree Lachlan will be out there, um, one of our faves, yeah. um, uh, who came up through the Victorian golf ranks herself um, and now into TV presenting, but she's going to be out there every step of the way um, keeping everyone updated. And, you know, I just... I, I have to say, you know, we're kind of reaping the rewards now of the work of ISPS Handa, but they've been doing it forever. Like, yeah. <clears throat> pardon me, but they've, they've been doing it for, for five, six years behind the scenes, whether it be on Wednesdays at LET golf events in, in the UK, having people come out, and, and they've been building it, and they kind of invested years ago so that the players that we're seeing now coming in and playing for these championships, you know, they've kind of been there every step of the way, and, and all credit has to go to them for that, that kind of vision. Yeah, and, and to see if... Field. Well, we had Daphne's from the Netherlands. We've got a Canadian and American uh, handful from various parts of the UK, uh, and obviously four Australians at the uh, AAAC. And it's it's great to see uh, the the impact of that sponsorship and all the work that Christian Hamilton and his team are doing around all the events um, really take off. And Edgar, everyone's just to be applauded. And the, and the ultimate goal is to get Paralympic golf up and running. Uh, I think with events as the ones we're about to see mm. the next couple of weeks. That's going to take a huge step forward. Well, I think it's, it also has to be said how important the pathway is. Yep. That being able to dream the same dreams as, you know, as, as able-bodied people, yeah. being able to think about holding the part for the Australian, you know, yeah. All Abilities Champion um, trophy. I, I just feel like in terms of motivation and, and kind of their journey in particular, I think that that's, that's number one for me. Uh, it's, it's, it's next level to watch it, as Justin says. It's very moving. Um, it uh, inspires you, it really does. I'm not just saying that. It, it makes you ponder how uh, poorly you've performed in your own athletic career sometimes, <laughs> Matt. I think they that's probably, so good. <laughs> that's probably a so fair good. comment to make. They're, they're brilliant. They're next level. Yeah, they're, they're athletes. They're world-class athletes right. with no other um, riders on that statement. Yeah. Now it's we're definitely got... not tokenistic. I mean, this oh, is, no. This is, no. This, these well, are athletes it. in the end. Absolutely. And when you say that it's the, it's the pathway, it's, it's, uh, it inspires those other young kids that... Yep. I can go and do that too, so that's yep. awesome. Yeah, it's really important. Now, a little whip around. Oh, Hazy Ellie, always has a very long <laughs> list of things that he wants to say. Sometimes we cut him short. What today, do you got for us today? Yeah, think, Come on, Hazy. I think today I'm going to get smashed and sliced <laughs> here, but let's go as quickly as we can. <laughs> Tasmanian Amateur Championship was held during the week, Ali. Um, two Queenslanders beat two Tasmanians in the men's and women's final. Uh, Will Florimo beat Ryan Thomas, uh, who's a, I guess, plays his golf at Yarra Yarra but uh, is still a member, uh, still a, very much a proud Tasmanian. And the women's side, Caitlin Campbell uh, Nyman, who's a member at Pacific Golf Club in Queensland, beat Sarah Johnston from Alveston. Both two and one results in the finals. Um, some really impressive golf played down there, uh, good fields. I really wanted to make mention of, of Caitlin, um, well, both, both winners actually. She's, she's, uh, she was fifth in the New South Wales amateur, fifth in the Queensland junior amateur. So it's really starting to take progressive steps forward here. Uh, and Will Florimo, um, I know you're a big fan of him. You've already recruited him onto the Falconer team. He's, a, down, he's one of mine. Down from Cairns <laughs> to Brisbane, he's studying at U12 at the Hills, uh, okay. so following Jason Day uh, in some respects. And he's a member at the Gales Golf Club, um, south of Brisbane there. 
I think that's going to be, uh, you know, just there's going to be so many Queenslanders uh, making state making moves this year. I think um, a lot of credit to all the QAS team up there going beautifully. So that's the Tasmanian Amateur Alley. Do you want me to keep rolling? Yeah, why not? Well, I, I can't stop you in between dot points. <laughs> no, that's true. Shout to the South, Ar- South Australian country team who, who pants the Victorian country team. First time at the New Golf Club this year in the annual conference between or competition between the two that women were involved. Um, so big shout to those guys for you know, taking the next progressive step as we all want in all our goals. So South Australian country, too good for Victoria. I know that's probably not quite in the same realm as the President's Cup map, but you'll have to bear with me for a minute. Um, the, the working around the tours of the world, the Jap- Japan, Japan even. You put the wrong tour. emphasis Jap- on the wrong Jap- syllable <laughs> again, Maisie. <Yeah. Nazi. laughs> <laughs> the Japanese men's tour um, during, during the week. Brad Kennedy had his fourth uh, top ten finish in his past five starts. Which it's a bit of roughy for the Aussie Open. Yeah, Ooh. well, like Brad Kennedy. He'd be really, really rough because he's going to be in Japan playing the tour championship. So, that so I said someone like Brad Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he, he's done enough to qualify. He told us a few weeks ago that he, if he went well enough, he'd qualify for the Tour Championship. That's on next week uh, in Japan. So good luck, Brad. There's, uh, I think, three or four others playing at the same time. Matt Griffin will be among those. Uh, Brendan Jones as well. Uh, Anthony Quayle, Matt Griffin, Brendan Jones all, all made the cut up there. So that's, that was a good result. Um, a, a blast from the past, Ellie. Ooh, uh, yes. David Gleeson. Wow, yeah. Uh, yeah, did really well uh, in the Sabah Masters in Malaysia. Finished tied second, lost in a playoff to um, one of your one of your um, favourite players. Oh, you've done that to me. No, yeah. I'm not going yeah. to use a tie. Uh, this is a tie name. Ellie's famous yeah, for a tie. Tang Camo Preset. Sure. Right? Really well done. Yeah. No one's going to argue. Is anyone that. able to overrule Ali? <laughs> no. So Daniel Fox is also top ten. But David Gleeson, fantastic. I'm oh, sorry to do that to you, Ellie. Uh, Aaron Wilkin, Travis Smythe did well, also in the top 20. Uh, on the PGA Tour that we didn't mention at Sea Island in Georgia. Rian Gibson sort of, he'll be happy and sad all in the one breath because he started his week so well, rounds of 66 and 64 to put him right in the mix um, and faded on the weekend, um, 74 and 71. Not that a tie for 40, 30 isn't good on the PGA Tour, but uh, he had a chance to really push his case for a better rank card when uh, the season resumes in 2020. Tyler Duncan. What do you know about him, Justin Falcon? Uh, he's a young Queenslander, winner of the, winner of the Cam Smith Scholarship. You're right? an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, but there's a different Tyler Duncan. Wins his first time on the PGA Tour, beat Webb Simpson, um, another President's Cup player, 19. And I would have bet you would have thought that uh, Webb Simpson probably would have prevailed Gotten up, there. Yeah, so, most people would have thought that, yeah. Yeah, so good effort from Duncan. Like Another name, you guys keep finding these really good young players. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, I guess we do. I mean, but it's uh, you know, it's just great to see that the um, the parity out there. I mean, the amount of players that can can win on the PGA Tour. I mean, it's just. Well, I think it it's an interesting part of the season. Just mm-hmm. to, to to point out, whenever you know, a lot of the big names are taking weeks off at the yeah. moment or preparing for Presidents Cup, and there's such an opportunity for some of these these young blokes or the, or the guys that have had you know 25 missed cuts in the last 30 starts, yeah. and they fit. Do you reckon there's a little sense that they've got? A bit more of a chance in this section of the season when it's a little quieter from the top names. Well, I think it probably you know now these guys need to get out to a good start because they don't want to start off behind when they start at the beginning of the year. So you do okay. see a lot of the guys that did play all of Asia or you know played um, some of these events. I mean the RSM the field was fantastic. They had some great players that were in that yeah, field, top 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 level players. Um, but yeah, you know they do get that chance. I mean everybody's going to take you know you get the younger guys and the and the guys that probably may not have gotten into a field or something like that or getting in the field at, at these events. But um, you do get a, a handful of the guys that, that want to start off their year well because if they play well in these events, they get a not, not relaxed going into the beginning of the season, but they, they feel they've got a head start against some of these guys that aren't that are taking the time off, like you said, Ali. All right, so we just did that to break up Hazy for a little bit, but now you can press on. Go yeah. back to your dot yeah, yeah. <laughs> two, two more things, and then I'll let you guys okay. sort of wrap it up. But one of the big things that happened this week, still in North America, was the USGA um, annually puts up a plaque in their museum. It's called the Hall of Champions. And for the first time ever, Ali, two Australian names on the one plaque, which I think is awesome. It represents all the USGA tournament winners. Um, through the year, and we saw Gabby Ruffles and Lucas Michelle honoured for their wins wow. in the Australian, in the US Women's Amateur and the US Mid Amateur Championship, respectively. 
The video is next level because it sort of puts a lump in your throat when you see the names that you know on that board because there just aren't that many Australians in that little um, Hall of Fame in, in New Jersey. So congrats again to them. We know we've done it before, but it just looks good, I think. Yeah, it it's, looks fantastic. It's, and it's great. And those moments are, yeah, they're priceless. Oh, they are. And, and Sue was to finish runner-up in the women's senior round there as well. So yeah. it could have been three. Wow. That close to three. And we would have taken over the United States, man. I'm not sure how that sort of <laughs> comes out. I thought you were going to say that your name went in there or something like that. You know, that's <laughs> Matt, what I was I waiting for. You know, Glenn. <laughs> you put it in there with, with a sharpie. Oh, <laughs> Graffiti. My, na my name's at, um, at it's Sawgrass. It is. You had a home one there, didn't you? No. no, no what did you do? 77 champion was Mark Hayes. Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, I do. Yes. All right. All right. Time okay. to get back on we track. Let's get back on track. Eh? <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, and the last one I've got, Ali, from the rapper of the world. The Australian uh, men's team was runner-up in the Age Pacific Senior Amateur Championship as a, as a unit. Uh, well done. There were some great individual performances, but we got run over by New Zealand, who are really strong in senior men's golf um, on the amateur front. So well done to all the men in that team. Um, some, some nice results there. I think in the individual, individual section, uh, there was Greg Rhodes, uh, Ian Frost, they were tied for third at three over. They were the best individual performances, but yeah, we didn't quite catch the Kiwis, but we'll get them next year. I think you are the finest sieve in terms of golf media that there is. Nothing gets past you. Mm. I don't know. I just feel like if, <laughs> if, you, if we don't know it, Hazy does. That's, that's what it feels like, Thanks, at least. I think. No, you guys do a great job. You know that in, uh, in, in Golf Australia and abroad. And, and Falks, I've got to say, you punch well above your weight in terms of um, Golf Australia and everything that you do for them. I know it's a really busy season for you. Thanks, so it's been great it's to good have, fun. We love uh, it. Great to have you here, the Executive Director as well of the President's Cup, uh, Matt Kamensky. Great to have Thanks you. Thanks for having you. me. Yeah, and Hazy, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Scraping the bottom. The, yeah, the, the sieve. The sieve. <laughs> like and the that. big sieve, Mark Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for our very special Australian Open preview. Um, brought to you by Drummond's Golf, Australia's biggest. Many thanks for their support. Um, it's shaping up to be a pretty epic Australian summer of golf. We hope you can uh, be there every step of the way with us. You've been watching Inside the Ropes.